Welcome back to the Forward Progress HQ YouTube channel, part of the Hammer Betting Network. I'm your host, Jason Cooper, alongside Fabian Summer. And today, we're going to talk about the Offensive Rookie of the Year, kind of look at the player landscape, who's out there, who we like, and just talk a little bit about the award. So before we get into the players and their path to winning this award, Suma, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of the award and what type of players most likely win it and how they do it? Yeah, I mean, it's usually quarterback, running back, right receiver. Tight ends have it tough because tight ends in general, uh, tight ends in general don't have strong rookie seasons. Like Kyle Pitts from a couple of years ago, we had like, I don't know, 1,100 receiving yards, not many touchdowns. That was very special for a tight end, but it's very, very hard for those or uh, for that position to have a statistical season that can compete for a, for an offensive rookie of the year award. So it's pretty much comes down to quarterback, running back, or wide receiver. And as a skill position guy, you usually need a very very strong season. For example, let's let's take a look at Jamar Chase won it with eighty one catches, one thousand four hundred fifty five receiving yards, and thirteen touchdowns. That's probably the ballpark to aim for skill position guys to win that award and then is the most important point for skill position players there can't be a good rookie quarterback because good rookie quarterbacks usually have the nod by the end of the season um for example i think it was the season with mac jones as a rookie where Jamas Chase won it. And Mac Jones, he was the, I think he was, don't name me on that, but I think Mac Jones was the favorite for the award, like before the Chiefs Bengals game, where Jamar Chase had that monster game with, I think, three touchdowns. Right until that, Mac Jones had a very, very underrated rookie season. I think he had mm-hmm. like 22 Th- touchdowns. 22 touchdowns. Uh... 3,801 yards, like pretty decent, respectable numbers for a rookie. 13 interceptions, which doesn't really help him out, but um, yes, like pretty, pretty decent numbers there for a rookie. Yes, exactly. But he he still didn't have that great statistical profile, mm-hmm. no rushing yards, no rushing touchdowns or whatever. So um, Jama Chase get, got ahead of him late in the season. So it's pretty much a good quarterback. If there's no quarterback, best skill position season. And that's pretty much it. Before we get into the next part of the episode, just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors over at Pinnacle. Pinnacle is the world's sharpest sports book, offering competitive odds for 25 years. If you're looking to bet on the NFL, NBA, NCAA football, or any sport for that matter, you should have Pinnacle as one of your available outs. Bet smart, bet Pinnacle, must be 19 plus, and please play it responsibly. Yeah, and, and like you mentioned, if you look back at all the years when a wide receiver or running back someone who wasn't a quarterback ended up winning it was because they had those kind of either statistical anomaly years which where they were just absolutely outstanding and obviously guys like jamar chase or saquon barkley or they had literally no competition like last like sorry not last year two years ago garrett wilson won and and there was really no good quarterback that year the the split for votes was was crazy on that one um so yeah that's kind of the perfect storm you need if you're looking at a wide receiver or running back you almost need uh a quarterback not to do well and that seems like it's going to be pretty hard this year with the amount of quarterback talent in the draft i mean we saw five quarterbacks go in the first round and you could argue that um maybe all five of them could play this year maybe most likely at least three of them will get some games in this year um but let's talk about path to victory here right now it's caleb's award to lose he's around plus 200 plus 170 if you look around at multiple different sports books here why don't you tell us about uh caleb's I guess not path to victory because it's his award to lose, but how he loses this award, I guess. Yeah, he would lose if he gets injured, obviously. Um, I think he can have a great season, but maybe needs, I don't know, 13-ish games to play. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he would get the award if he only plays like 11 or 12 games and then we get a great special season from, from Marvin Harrison, for example, or a different quarterback. Um, I think he has to play the majority of, majority of the games. And we always talk about the g- generational talents. He also has a generational 
situation for a rookie quarterback because when you remember all those first of all picks like i mean bryce young last season Trevor lawrence in his rookie season those guys usually don't have that great of a surrounding situation like decent o-line and he's throwing the ball to um Romo dunze dj moore and uh, keen allen so usually you don't have that situation for a rookie quarterback so everything is set up for great rookie success but there's still the possibility that he struggles in his rookie year i mean yep. that's that's the nature that's the variance of the position uh nfl is a, is a different ballpark than playing in college so either injury or either not having that great up to expectation rookie season i would say are the path for him not to win the award yeah that, that makes sense here and um i'm curious to hear your thoughts on, on some other uh players in this award markets here mostly specifically the quarterbacks um let's assume caleb either gets hurt or has a not so great year like you mentioned there you got Jaden daniels you got jj mccarthy you seem to be most likely to get the most playing time bo nix as well who will probably uh fight out and, and potentially win that job and then drake may obviously uh and any of those three guys drake may it's a little bit tougher because Jacoby Brissett, I think of all of the, of the last three that I named, probably is the best starting quarterback uh, of 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 those three between McCarthy, Nix, and, and May in front of them. Uh, so, who would you kind of look at quarterback wise uh, outside of Caleb Williams here, if you were to pick one of them, or do you feel like the odds almost don't really justify uh, going after one of those quarterbacks, especially if you don't know this early on in the season if they're going to even be starting out the gate or not? I think I would look at Jaden Daniels first because. I think, or I'm pretty sure that he will start from week one. And he has a decent skill position group to throw to. And he has a he adds a great floor with his legs. So he will have those rushing yards and rushing touchdowns, those fantasy stats, so to speak, of that are important late in December when, when we are thinking about this award. So starter could start all games and could have the production despite... I, I, I'm not sure that he will be a good rookie quarterback, but I think he can be a rookie quarterback with the fantasy production to maybe be in the in in the in the hunt for, um, to win that award later on. So Jane Dennis for me uh, in in a tier of his own. I think from the other quarterbacks, there's a chance that maybe JJ McCarthy and Drake May don't start our games. Maybe we see Brissett, like you said. Maybe we see Sam Darnold in Minnesota early on. I think McCarthy ha probably has the best situation outside of Caleb Williams because he's dealing with a very decent uh, O-line with a top five um, OT tandem. Justin Jefferson, John Addison, TJ Hawkinson will probably join after week four coming back from his injury. Great uh, or good play caller in, in KOC. So McCarthy has a great situation. He could also put up decent stats from a production standpoint. Bo Nix might also be a 17-game starter, but I'm not sure how he might get to those production stats. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I really like the Denver Broncos um, supporting cast. And uh, he, he was more like a check down Charlie in, in college. Doesn't mean doesn't have to mean much when it comes to the pros, but I, I'm I'm just not seeing that great of a statistical profile for Bo Nix. And Drake May, even if he starts, he doesn't have a great surrounding cast. Mm -hmm. So even even though he might end up as a quarterback one or quarterback two in terms of long-term um, quarterback performance from this class, but I'm just not seeing the environment for him to really thrive when it comes to those fantasy production stats late late in the in the year. So. For me right now at those current odds, I'm looking at a plus 600 right now for Jane Daniels. It, it's probably Jane Daniels because he could have all those rushing stats. Yeah, and, and like you said, you said you said this to me off camera here. Uh, we were talking about just maybe the prospect of an offensive tackle ever winning, and you said they don't get fantasy points. And so it seems like a lot of uh, the, the the drive of this award is how many fantasy points you, you put up here. So uh, you got to keep that in mind when you're betting on something like this. Um, Let's look a little bit further down the board here just for this last question. Do you have any any long shot that you like or anybody that you're looking at outside of the quarterback position? Let's say the quarterbacks completely disappoint this year uh, and it kind of leaves the field a little bit open for a wide receiver or a running back. Right now, Marvin Harrison is, I mean, the most likely and most most favorite of all those skill position players. But you got guys in, in pretty good 
positions here. You got Xavier Worthy in a, in a great spot. You got um, Keon Coleman in a great spot. They've got tons of tons of players falling into really good spots. Um, anyone you like in particular, uh, wide receiver or running back wise, as a long shot? I would not necessarily bet it, mm-hmm. but I would be looking at maybe Brian Thomas or Kian Coleman mm-hmm. because those guys could easily end up getting by far the most targets in their offense. Um, uh, I mean, the Jaguars after Calvin Ridley, I mean, they added G- Gabe Davis. And Gabe Davis, I mean, he's, he's kind of more like a boom or bust outside wide receiver kind of guy. So Brian Thomas might see a, a lot of targets in that offense. And Kian Coleman as well getting that outside receiver spot. Uh, Romo Dunze, I'm not high on in this award, even if he might be the number two wide receiver in terms of performance, uh, because there are so many targets to be had in that Bears offense with, with Keen Allen, with, with DJ Moore. And um, let's say Roman Dunsey has that kind of classic wide receiver one um, season, that it would also mean that Caleb Williams was pretty good. And mm-hmm. then it's, yeah. it turns into a quarterback award anyway. So um, probably Brian Thomas um, I like. And that's that's pretty much it. Lad McConkey could also be like a super target monster in the in the Chargers mm-hmm. offense. But I'm not sure he will have the, the stylistic points like catching deep bombs like Jama Chase on, on, and stuff like that. Um, Malik Neighbors. I think I I would put him closer towards that tier with uh, Keen Coleman, Brent Thomas. I think that is his odds are too short right now because we are not really looking at, at an offense like like the Arizona Cardinals where Marvin Harrison can consistently like catch balls at all areas of the field. I, I just don't see it stylistically for Malik neighbors in this Giants offense. So. Um, yeah, long shots. I, I would probably start looking at at thirty to one or or higher, mm-hmm. and that means probably the the range of Brian Thomas and Kian Coleman. Fair enough. Here, I, mean, I noticed you didn't mention any running backs, so I'm just going to throw a running back out there that I I might like and I think has a shot. Seven, Seventy-five to one. You probably get a better price if you shop shop around. And so you can tell me if I'm crazy here, but I really like. I don't really like, but just at the odds, Marshawn Lloyd. If 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 Caleb Williams were to not win, if a quarterback were not to win, I could see Marshawn Lloyd filling that role for the Green Bay Packers of what Aaron Jones filled for the team um, for many years. I, and I could see Josh Jacobs fall into that age, more AJ Dillon archetype. Marshawn Lloyd is an incredibly explosive player, fun to watch. Promises from just watching him over at USC. Does like to fumble the ball a lot. So if you can hold on to the ball, I think maybe you could see an explosive year from him. Seriously. Uh, so, uh, and that, that might be the type of player that kind of wows people and catches their eye. That's kind of my thought process behind that. I mean, I doubt it's going to happen again. There's so many good quarterbacks that it's really hard to pick a, a skill position player, but just kind of gun to my head. That's someone who I would look at. I'm just looking at Alan Kamara's rookie season. Mm-hmm. He had like um, 81 receptions for 826 yards, five touchdowns, and added like 70 plus yards and eight touchdowns on the ground. So we are probably looking at at least kind of that season. Mm-hmm. But the issue is that it wasn't just a good quarterback class. It was also a great wide right receiver class. Yeah. So oh. I think the odds that a, a running back will have like a, let's say a production wise, a better season than all the wide receivers, I think are already pretty low. And then we haven't talked about the quarterbacks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. If you guys enjoy the content, make sure you let us know who you think is going to win offensive rookie of the year and who you would bet on to an offensive rookie of the year. It's still very early on in the offseason, so uh, maybe wait to pull the trigger on these for a bit if you don't want to tie up your money a little bit too early. If you like the content, make sure you like the hit the like button, excuse me. And if you like the content as well, make sure you subscribe because we've got tons more content coming your way. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you guys in the next one.